All right, let's head to the SEC East Division Championship game. The Georgia Bulldogs hosting the Missouri Tigers. I, I This is one of those moments where I think kind of everything is true. I think Georgia is the number one team in the nation or should be the number one team in the nation. I think they are getting better. I don't think they're as good as last year. I think Missouri is deserving of their ranking. I think that their schedule is better than people think. I think they've been a more complete team than people think. And I think Georgia should be favored by two touchdowns. <laughs> so I think almost all of the talking points around this game are real. I thought most of the disrespect was going to be used by Eli Drinkowitz. And all week for two weeks, no one thinks you can win. 15 and a half point underdog, blah, 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 blah. I think the fact that this game was close last year is actually works for both teams. It is true that Missouri benefits from having played in a close game with Georgia. It is true that Georgia benefits from having played in a close game with Missouri. I, I think all the things are true in this situation. I think Brady Cook needs to be used on some design runs, get their leg, get the legs going, a la Peyton Thorne and what Auburn did. They need to throw the ball down the field and attack Georgia's defense the way Spencer Rattler did. Those are the two games in which Georgia played close in the first half. And frankly, Liam Cohen in Kentucky designed a few plays that got players open against Georgia in the first half, and Devin Leary wasn't good enough to hit them. So I, I, I think this is actually very similar to the Alabama-Tennessee game. I think Missouri is going to have a really good game plan. They are going to play very well in the first half. They have Luther Burden. Tennessee does not, for example. And then at halftime, Georgia makes adjustments. Carson Beck makes big throws in the third and fourth quarter. They wear down Missouri and they win the game in the end in the fourth quarter because they have too many dudes. Am I, am I giving Missouri too much credit? Or does that, or am I right to say that Missouri is in this game basically even in the third quarter? I think there's a chance here, and I, maybe maybe it cuts both ways. I think if you're Georgia, Kirby Smart can play the disrespect card. We're not number one in the playoff rankings. The committee doesn't believe in us, and they come out and they just crush Missouri, like sort of like they did Arkansas a few years ago. Kentu well, Kentucky, was, right? It was supposed to be a close game, and Georgia just crushed them. It also cuts for Missouri, too. I think the, the fact that nobody is going to pick Missouri is going to work in their favor. They can just, they're the underdog. They have everything to gain by going in there and just emptying the playbook. Whatever tricks Kirby Moore has, I would be using Luther Burden at quarterback. To your point, the, two, the three keys that I have down here for Missouri to win, it would be Brady Cook. Mobility like Peyton Thorne, it would be attacking downfield like uh, you know, like we saw Spencer Rattler. And the third thing is pressure Carson back. Missouri 24 sacks this year. That defensive front, if they can get some pressure, if they can create some havoc, then you got a chance to make this a game. Problem is, I think Georgia's the best team in college football, and I think they're starting to kick it up a notch as we go into this uh final stretch of the season. So I like what Missouri has done. This is just a heavy lift because it's hard to find one area where I think they can attack a Georgia weakness because this team just doesn't have a lot of them. We saw last week without Brock Bowers, you know, Dominic Lovett and uh, Lad McCon a healthy Lad McConkey, uh, mm -hmm. you know, stepped up in the passing game. So it's just not a, not a ton of weaknesses uh, for Georgia that are glaring for Missouri to take advantage of. The the most consistent player for Georgia is the starting quarterback. He has largely been the stabilizing forward, the inexperienced guy who never played coming into the season, the guy we didn't know was going to be tested throughout the course of the year. No, the guy who has carried this team carries the wrong word because they're, they're largely dominant, but like you get my point, they lose Brock Bowers or they're struggling on the road against Auburn or they're struggling at South Carolina or like in the first half against Kentucky, Carson Beck lit them up, just lit them up. Like it, it, everywhere, every time Georgia's had a question, which has not been often, the answer has been Carson Beck. And that that is what I think happens here as well, that they get into a little bit of a fight here with Missouri and that it's just so hard to keep pace for 60 minutes with a team like Georgia when even, and, and I don't, this is the problem, like it should not take away. If Georgia just sort of outlasts Missouri and, and they just sort of sit on them in the fourth quarter and they run the football in a couple of long scoring drives, a la Tennessee against Kentucky last week. Right. Pretty close game back and forth. Just two masterful drives by Joe Milton and Josh Heupel in Tennessee to just like just destroy Kentucky's soul at the end of that game and wins the game. 
still a good close game between two two equal almost equally matched teams. I, I think it feels like that that Georgia gets two or three big drives in the fourth quarter where they just go, guess what, Missouri? We are the two time defending champs. And you're going to have one of your best seasons, and it shouldn't take away from that the fact that Missouri might lose this game in the fourth quarter. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know how you go into Athens and win this. I think Ole Miss is the team that I'd be worried about if I'm Georgia. I, I think there's no shame in Missouri if you lose this game by 20 points. They, they, they could realistically they could finish the re, the rest of their season and win all their games, and they could be 10 wins. This is just a heavy lift to go into Georgia and win this game. And considering some of the matchups, I, I will say one other thing here. Missouri's not giving up a ton of big plays and their secondary, I think can play a little bit better. And I think coming into the year, this was one of the better secondaries in the sec. So I'm curious with their ability to create some pressure, ability to cover limit, big plays. You know, there are some things here. You could see how Missouri yep. can maybe try and slow down Georgia. But again, if they lose 41 to 10, it's not a knock on Missouri. They've had a great season. They're going to finish out strong. I think it just says more about how good Georgia is if they just come in and flex and they take control from the jump, and it's not a contest at all. I, I will be interested to see if they take some shots down the field with Luther Burden, maybe in man-to-man -man coverage, because that's what Kirby likes to do on defense. If they then design some runs for Brady Cook, that that then opens up their ability to run the ball with Schrader and the rest of those guys because Missouri has shown that they are willing to win in any type, different type of way. They can play the LSU shootout, then they can line up and run the football down South Carolina's throat. They, they took the punches from Kentucky on the road, they came back, bounced back, and went on a crazy, just very impressive run against a, a decent Kentucky team. So I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think there's a chance that Missouri plays very, very well in this game, and that they are in the game playing their best, but they have to be better than their best. They have to be perfect in the fourth quarter to survive Georgia on the road. And I, I think Georgia's ready for this team. I think they're ready because of what happened last week. So I would take Missouri plus the 15 and a half. There could be a backdoor cover by Georgia there, you know, with a, with a late drive to push the lead. So I wouldn't bet on it. I think Georgia wins like 10 points. I think it's like 30, 36, 27 or something like that. You know, 38, 27, maybe a 10, 11 point game. I'd be worried about that backdoor cover. If I'm, if I'm, if I've got Missouri plus the 15 and a half. I like Georgia and I like Georgia to cover, I think as well. I think they do exactly what you said. They get the backdoor cover and uh, went out right plus the backdoor cover.